Today we're talking about iron body conditioning. This is a practice in which you literally beat the weakness out of your body. Well, greetings and good day, and welcome to my uh, living room. And uh, yeah, this is, this, this is where I'm going to do this video, apparently. You're welcome beat the weakness out of your body and then let yourself heal and then beat the weakness out of your body and then let yourself heal and it just keeps going on like that forever. See there's a principle at play here called Wolf's Law, W-O-L-F-F-S. It states that your bones when put under a reasonable amount of stress enough to cause what's called micro fractures, very tiny little fractures inside your bone, you don't want to call them macro fractures, micro fractures. If left to heal, those micro fractures will have an increased density in your bone. It's like a scab inside and on your bone causes your bones to become thicker, more dense, stronger, and more able to stand further, more strenuous stress. It's kind of how your muscles work. When you lift the weight, you cause tears in your muscle. Those tears allow it to heal, will heal. If you tear too much, you break your muscle, that's no good. If you break your bone, that's no good. But if you cause small breaks in your bone, that is good. Small breaks are what we're after. Big breaks, not so much. A lot of people focus on the hands, and that's a very good thing to focus on. But iron body conditioning is something that you need to do for every single bone in your body. And if you don't, you're going to have weak spots. And so when you go to kick somebody because you didn't do iron body conditioning with your shin, uh, your shin breaks. You know, because you, maybe you go shin on shin. Shin breaks. The less dense bone will be the one that breaks. It's generally how it's going to work. So, make your body stronger. If you had been doing iron body conditioning and your bones were stronger, and you went to kick somebody and you went shin on shin, now maybe their bone breaks instead of your bone breaks. It means you win. Stronger bones, better the fighting. Denser bones also, <laughs> that your bones, the density that comes from iron body conditioning also adds mass. So your skeletal structure becomes heavier. And if you don't know, force equals mass times acceleration. So you don't, just have to put on muscle to put on mass, you can increase the density of your bone and also put on mass. Iron body conditioning. Where do you start when you're just starting out? You need to look at every area of your body and do an exercise for each area of the body. Some areas you can do at the same time as you do other areas. Allow me to demonstrate. For your hands, I'll show you in another video, punching of a makiwara. This is a very good training for your hands. There's also other things that you can do, slapping of wood. There are a lot of different hand exercises. A great way to start is simply knuckle push-ups. Using knuckle push-ups, you create stress in your bone, which creates micro fractures, which then allows your hands to build up stronger, getting them ready for when you're actually ready to do real striking. You don't have a Makiwara because most people don't when they're just starting out and that's why I'm not showing you on my Makiwara because I don't want to show you end game content. I want to show you how you can start out as being the beginner and we'll get to the end game content later in another video. That's okay. That's no problem. But right now you need to worry about how do I start? Good place to start with iron body conditioning will help strengthen these knuckles here and all the rest of the bones that you can reasonably hit with these knuckles here. One good place to start is your arm. Work up and down your arm. Switch to the other hand, up and down the arm. I'll do an actual iron body conditioning demonstration at the end of this. I'll just, I'm just gonna do the iron body conditioning and then you can, you can watch. If you wanna skip ahead to that, go right ahead. Uh, this is, you know, I'm just kind of rambling, explaining. Uh, I'm going to make sure that my video is at least 10 minutes long and I don't want to beat on myself for 10 minutes. Iron body conditioning, the training, I do it Mondays and Fridays. Mondays is bone conditioning, Monday, Friday is bone conditioning, Friday. I don't know why, Monday and Friday, there's a good bit of time in between both of them and it allows my body to heal. Like I said, healing is essential. If you break and then break and then break and then break, 
but don't allow to heal, you will not make yourself stronger, you will make yourself progressively weaker. It's very important to allow your body to heal, you can't stress this enough. It's also a good idea to be taking some calcium supplements or start eating the bones in your fish full of calcium, really good for your skin too. Eat more of uh, more of your animal bone marrow if you're into larger larger game. Super good, super good for for your joints, for your cartilage, for your bones. There's also a cream called Ditta Gel. I might be butchering the pronunciation of that, but it is a topical cream that you put on your hands typically after you have done an extensive uh, iron body conditioning session. It supposedly really, really helps the healing. I personally have never used it. I personally have not found a need for it. As long as you have a good break between sessions, I, I, I've been fine. But that's just me. Other people swear by it. I haven't been able to really find a very good, reliable, trustworthy source of it, so I kind of haven't looked into it right? much more beyond that. I'm aware of it. I know what it is. I know what it does. It's made of a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know, and it's supposed to provide really, really good healing benefits to your iron conditioned body. But iron body conditioning. So taking these knuckles here is very simple. Back of the hand. All the way up. All the way down. Turn on the side. Same thing. Turn your arm this way. Same thing. Admittedly, beating on your bicep is not going to do much as far as hitting the bone. But, let's see if I can. You have better access to the bone through right here in between the muscles. Sure. And you will also find it a sensitive spot when you're doing iron body conditioning. I can feel every time I hit, I'm also hitting the nerve, and it makes my fingers go. I do this training with usually a wooden towel, but there are also other things you can use in order to train your body harder. This is very light training. Your chest, your neck, all your ribs, your legs, everywhere on your body that you can reasonably reach can be iron body conditioned. knuckles. If you're hitting flat, you're not doing much. You need to make more force. By making more force, you can create, use a smaller area and you will apply more force to that smaller area. If you use a larger area, you apply that force over a larger area and that force is less impactful upon your body. So you can lessen or increase as you need to. I suggest increase.
this soft spot right there to work on this button better, longer. There's no reason that you have to do this on one foot, I just wanted to do it for dramatic effect. A nice little bit of iron body conditioning. You can feel that I've hit most areas on the front of my body. The back, more difficult to do obviously with ham. I prefer my wooden down. But here we are. You now have the knowledge necessary to begin iron body conditioning so that you can do stuff about like this.